Hi, this is Dave from the Floodwood shop. And we're going through construction math. The last several weeks, I've been showing you different techniques on what to do to try to help make math a little more simple. To give you some ways to find out how to figure out these problems, larger problems, more in your head than having to write them all out. And I'm still gonna write them all out today. And our whole point was, we started out, we wanted to be able to do, for construction, be able to figure out the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is A times A plus B times B equals C squared. But we're trying to find out what C itself is. So then we have to find out what the square root of C is. So the last few weeks, we've learned ways of using a base number of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, how to multiply, ways that you can do that in your head so you can multiply larger numbers. So we'll go through that sequence a little bit here again today. And then I also showed you a couple different videos of how to find the square root. There were, one of them was a video of how to find the square root of a whole number. The other one was a video of how to find the square root of any number. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And that'll be your problems that you have. I'll give you a few problems and you'll have to find the, the square root doing this method that I'm doing here. You're gonna have to write it out just like I'm writing it out on the board today. And the whole purpose for writing it out is so that you can start to retain it. So then it'll begin to just be something where you can look at a number and you're gonna be able to solve that in your head because you've, you've, in, you've placed this work, by doing the work, it starts to ingrain it in your, in your memory bank and you're gonna be able to see numbers and you're gonna be able to multiply them, you're gonna be able to find the square root without working it all out. But for now, we need to work them all out. So our A, our A, our B, and our C. So our A in construction, this would be our rise. Anything that's vertical, anything that's vertical, is your rise. Anything that's horizontal, our B is our horizontal, that is our run. So we have rise over run. And we're trying to find, like if we were looking at this, because this is uh, happens to be a 12, when you do the pitch of a rope, it's always something over 12 inches, one foot. This is a pitch of 412. That's what the pitch is. But we're trying to find out what C is. And to be able to find out what C is, we have to do the Pythagorean Theorem. So we have to take four, and we have to square. So four squared, so four times four, that equals 16. Four times four equals 16. Then we have to add it to 12 squared. Again, 12 is our B, so we go 12 times 12. That equals, well, that equals 144. I put an equal sign there, I wanted a plus sign. So we're going 16 plus 144. And that's going to give us C squared. So 144 plus 16, if we add 16 there, um, we're going to get 160. 4 plus 6 is 10. 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. 160. So that's C equals 160. Well, now we got to find the square root to find C, because this is C squared. C squared is 160. Now we have to find out what the square root, because we need to find C. So we have to take the square root of 160. We need the square root of 160. And if you can remember from one of our previous videos of how to do that, I had a list of other numbers over here when we were doing that. Um, and what we have to do is find a, a number that's close to this, that's not over, but it's close. Something squared, like uh, 13 times 13, uh, 169, 12 times, so we know 169 is more, so it can't be 13. So we gotta use the next one under is 12, and that's 144. 
And we're going to take that, that 12 is, is the first part of our answer. Then we're going to take 160 minus the 144. Cross off the 6, put a 5, bring 1 over. So I got 10 minus 4 is 6. 5 minus 4 is 16. So now we've got 16. This 16 becomes our numerator. And then for the fraction, we double this digit. Whatever this is, we double it, and that becomes our denominator. So that's 24. Now we're going to reduce our fraction. We can divide both of them by 4. 16 divided by 4 is, divide that by 4, that equals 4. Divide whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom, that equals 6. You can divide that by 2, and that equals 2. Divide this by 2, and that equals 3. So we end up with a, an answer of 12 and 2 thirds. But we need to put this into a decimal point. And so our decimal point, we divide 2, and then we divide that by 3. 3 cannot go into 2, but in the decimal point, add a 0 here. 3 goes into 20, uh, 6 times, which is 18. 20 minus 18 is 2. Bring down another 0. 3 goes into 26 times. And this is just going to keep repeating itself, 6, 6, 6. And that's what we're going to get. Uh, so our answer comes out to be 12 point, and I'm actually going to round this up, 12.67. And if you remember uh, from before, when you find the square root of these numbers, this doesn't get us exact. It doesn't give us the exact dimension or the exact number. If you actually found the, the square root of 160, the actual number is 12.64911. 12.64911. And I told you, you'd be within a couple hundreds or a thousands. And so in construction, this is getting us close, as close as we need to do. So it's real, it's breaking the math down fairly simple so that we can do it easily if we're standing up on a plank uh, trying to figure out our length. So now I know that C equals 12.67. That's as close as I need, need to be. So if I need, a, I'm up, I need to holler a length, I need 12.67 inches, I need 12 and 5 eighths of an inch. And that's all we need to do. I'm just going to go through a, a, a few problems today. I'm not going to do a ton. We'll do another one here. I said the whole, what I'm trying to get you guys to do is to start to use your heads, your brain. Because every one of you have the amazing ability to do this stuff in your head without technology and the sad part today is because of technology you guys don't get the ability to use the skills that you actually have and so we're trying to pull those skills out so you aren't always reliant on your phone your calculator your computer so the same thing again here we've got a equals 6, B is 17, so this is 17 is our, is our run, 6 is our rise. We want to find out what C is. But to find out what C is, we have to do the Pythagorean Theorem. So we have to take 6 squared, which is A. Our rise is A, A squared. So A times A, 6 times 6 is 36. And then we add that to 17 squared. I can't just multiply in my head unless I know this, this, uh, what I've been showing you over the last few weeks of how to do this. 17 times 7, we're using a base of 10. So this is where it's going to start to play. You can do this in your, in your head now. I'm going to still work it out, but you're going to be able to multiply 17 by 7, or 17 by 17. You're going to be able to do that in your head because you're going to know these steps. So you know that 17 is 7 more than 10. 17 again is 7 more than, than 10. You're going to add diagonally. It 
doesn't matter which direction you add, if you add diagonally this way or diagonally this way, you're going to come up with the same answer. 17 uh, plus 7 is uh, 24. And then you're going to multiply it by whatever your base is. When it's 10, it's pretty simple because all you're doing is adding a 0. So we have 240. Now we multiply these two numbers together. 7 times 7 is 49. You're going to add that to the 240, and you end up with 289. So we're doing 36 plus 289, and that's going to, that's going to give us our uh, total, which is 325. We take 36, add 9 and 6 is 15, 8 and 3 is 11 plus 1 is 2, and carry the 1, 325. So 325. That 325, remember that this is A squared, this is B squared, this is C squared. But we need to find out what C is. So now we have to find the square root of 325. We've got to find out the square root. If you don't know this symbol like this, this means square root. So I'm sure you, you probably know that. If you don't, that's okay. But that's what that means, 325. Um, so now we've got to figure out what, what number we're going to use. So 17 times 17 was 289. So let's try number, another number. Let's try 18. So let's multiply that out because we want to find something that is the square root of this. We got to find the next number that's closest to this but doesn't go over. We know that we're not much bigger than 289, so we're just going to go one number bigger. We'll find out if that's right. We'll go 18 times 18. Do that same thing again. Like I said, you'll be able to do this in your head. Add those together across. It comes up to 36. Multiply it times 10. 360. Multiply these two numbers together is 64. 8 times 8 is 64. You're going to add those together. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry the 1. We end up with 4. Uh, 400. Oh, wait a second. I did that wrong. It's not 30, 36. It's 26. I added too many ones. 20, 26, we have 260 plus 64 is 4, 12, 324. So we end up with 324. We're going to take that 324 and we're going to subtract it from there. Remember this 18, that's our, that's our whole number. Whatever square root number that's closest to this, that becomes the first number of our answer. So we take 325 minus 324, that's 1. This 1 becomes our numerator. So we put a numerator there, put our fraction line, and that's 1 over whatever this number is, double. 18 plus 18 is 36. And then we find uh, the decimal point, so we take, we divide 1 divided by 36, 36 does not go into 1, add our decimal point, put a 0, it does not go into 0. Excuse me, add a, add a number 0, 36 goes into 100, we'll say 2 times, 36 times 2, 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 72, cross out the 1, 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 2 is 20, is 2. So we have 28, bring down another 0. 280, uh, 36 goes into that. Let's take a guess. 36 times 8, 8 times 6 is 48, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28, 288, so it can't be that. 36 times 7. 42, 21 plus 4, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 5, so 200, and
and 52. So we end up, this as far as we go, we're in on the board. I said you only got to get to the third, to the 100, the, the thousand spot. So we're at 0 .027. So 18 and 136 for C is 18.027. If you were to divide this out on the calculator, it's actually 18.027. Seven, six. That's the, the actual number. So we come out really, really close. We could have kept working it out farther. We may have came out really close to exact, but it gets us close enough. Okay, I'm just going to do two more, and that's all we'll do for, for this. And hope, because everything that I'm showing you is all the steps that we've done on all the other videos. So I'm not showing you anything new. We're just putting all those steps into practice now so we can find out what C is in the Pythagorean theorem. That's our, our, whole, our whole goal. All right, uh, let's say our rise is seven, our run is 22. Again, Pythagorean theorem, A squared, so 7 times 7 is 49, plus our b squared, which is 22 times 22. So if you don't know what that is, our simple using a, a base of 22 times 22, this time we can use a base of 20. We have a base of 20. 22 is 2 greater, again it's 2 greater, and diagonally either direction, that comes out to 24. 22 plus 2 is 24. Now we're multiplying this by 20. To make it simpler, we'll multiply 24 by 2, which is 48. And now we add, just add the zero on it. So 24 times 20 is 480. And then we multiply 2 times 2, and that's 4. So we add the 4. And we end up with 484. So 49 plus 484. Again, this is A squared, and this is B squared. And this will equal our, our C squared. So 484 plus the 49, you add those two together. 4 plus 9 is 13, carry the 1. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Carry the 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. That equals 533. So C squared equals 533. Now we need to find the square root of that so that we can find C. Again, we'll go back. Um, let's try... Let's try 23. So we need to find some number that is squared that is close to 533, the closest number squared without going over it. We know that 22 squared is 484, that's too small. We'll just try one higher, so we'll try 23. Again, we'll use this same math, 23. We'll put it over a base number of 20. 23 is three greater, three greater than 20. Add diagonally, so we have 26. 23 plus 3 is 26. Now we multiply it by our base number. 26 times, times 20, or we'll go 26 times 2, because we don't have to worry about the zero at the moment. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. Now we just add the zero onto the end of the number. We have 520. And then we multiply the 3 times the 3 is 9. And then we add that number together, we come up with 529. So we know that our first digits of our number, the whole number, is going to be 23. We take the 529. It's less than 533, but it's not over. It's the closest number. 23 squared is 529. It's the closest squared number that doesn't go over the 533. 
Now you take those, subtract the 529 from it, cross out the 3, bring the 1 over, 13 minus, so you're subtracting these, 13 minus 9 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0, so we end up with 4. This 4 becomes your numerator. We bring the 4 over here next to the 23 for the fraction line. Our denominator, you take the 23, this whatever this whole number is, and you double it, and that becomes your denominator. 23 plus 23 is uh, 46. We'll divide that, we'll reduce this fraction, so we'll divide it by 2, divide it by 2, and this ends up with 2 over 23. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 46 divided by 2 is 23. So we end up with a fraction of 2 over 23. Now we have to take that and make that into a decimal point. We divide our 2 by 23. It does, 23 can't go into 2 for a decimal point, a decimal point, add a 0. 23 goes into 20 how many times? 0 times. <coughs> 23 goes into goes in at 200, um, let's try, let's try 8 times, 23 times 8, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 2 is 8, 184, so we'll go with 8, and we multiply that all right, 184, subtract them, cross out the 2, Make that a 9, make this a 10, 10 minus 4 is 6, 9 minus 8 is 1, bring down another 0, 160, 23 goes into uh, 160, uh, 4, 5, let's say 6 times, we'll check that out, 23 times 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, 138. Let's see if that's, we might need one more number. Two. So we're, we're fine, that was right, 0 0.08. Now we're into 200 and, and 20. So 23 goes into 220, it'll be nine times, that's as far as we, we need to go. So our answer is gonna be, C is gonna equal 23, because here's our number, way over here, with all of our mess that we got, 23 and 446, reduced to 23 and two, two 20 thirds, it's gonna come out to be 23.089. Again, we're just going to the thousand spot. That's as far as we're going to go. If you multiply it out on a calculator, it comes out to be 23.08679. So like I said, this is really close. When it comes to the construction math that we need to do, this is going to get you close enough. And everything that we're doing, all these steps that we're doing, you're going to be able to just do those in your head without having to write this all down, but we're we're writing it all down just to just so you can be, get this stuff ingrained in your memory bank, so it becomes easy. Um, I'll do. I think I'll do one more. Clean off the board a little better this time. I'll do one more, and then that'll be enough. So like I said, everything we're doing, this is what I have given you over the last number of weeks of easy ways to find out without using your calculator, without using your phone, without using the computer, without Googling it. This is you using your brain to actually figure it out. And 
I don't know if you realize it or not, but the more that you use your, your brain to figure it out, the smarter and the easier, the smarter you become and the easier that things will be for you. Um, let's do uh, 9 and 20, 24. So again, a squared plus b squared, so 9 squared, 9 times 9, the theorem, 81 times or plus b squared, so 24, again, if you don't know what 24 squared is, just go 24 by 24. We can use a base number of 20. This is 4 greater, this is 4 greater, and diagonally one direction, that's 28. Multiply it by the 20, so we just multiply it by 2. You can ignore the 0 for the moment. 8 times 2 is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. We have 56, now we're going to add that 0. Just put it back on there. Now we multiply the 4 times the 4, which is 16. We add that 16 to the 560, and we end up with 576. So 24 squared, 24 times 24, is 576. And that's going to equal our c squared, so 81 plus 576, we have 7, uh, 15, 6, that equals 657. So we've got 657, again 81 is a squared, 576 is b squared, 657, the answer is c squared. We don't need c squared, we need to find c. So that means we have to find the square root of 657. So we said 24, uh, let's use the number 25, we'll do the same math. We got to find a, a squared number that comes as close to 657 without going over. It's got to be the closest one. It can't be 24 because it's too far away. We'll do 25. 25 times 25. Again, we'll do that same thing. You can do this in your head. By now, you're going to be able to do this in your head. But I'm going to keep writing it out. And, and so will you. This is 5 more. This is 5 more. We're going to add diagonally. 25 plus 5 is 30. 30 times 20. We're just going to go 30 times 2. We're going to ignore the 1, 0. This is 0. This is 60. Now we just take this 0. We just add it to the end. That answer is 600. We multiply 5 times 5 equals 25. We take this 25 and we add it here. Our answer is 625. So 625 is the closest number. If you were to go to 6, 26 times 26, that's, a, that's, that's going to be larger than 657. So you might have to guess on a couple of them. Make sure you're the closest one without going over. You're subtracting those numbers. So the, the c squared, you're taking the c squared minus this over here, 625. 7 minus 5 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. So we have 32. So our answer is going to be 25, this becomes our numerator, put a fraction, our denominator is this whole number doubled, which is 50, now we reduce it, we'll divide them by 2, that equals 16, divide by 2, that equals 25, so we end up with 25 and 16 over, over 25. And now we take 16 and we divide it by 25. 25 does not go on to 16 for the decimal point. Add a zero. 25 goes into 160 six times. That equals 150. Six times five is 30. For the three, 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3 is 150.
subtract that, you end up with 10. Bring down another zero. 25 goes into 100 four times. Four times 25 is 100. We end up with 0.64. So C equals 25.64. Um, if you were to multiply this out on the calculator, you would come up with 25.63201. So look at how close we are. Like I said, when it comes to the construction, this gets you, it's not giving you the exact number, but it's giving you all that you need. So we're close enough. So again, everything we've been doing over these last few weeks is, is to help make math a little bit easier for you. So you can start looking at these numbers and seeing the answers just by looking at it. Because you can start to figure these things out using a base number of 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. Um, simple ways of finding a square root of a number simply and you can start doing these things in your head and you're going to look like like a genius and the reason you'll look at it is because you are so just remember you need to solve the problems you need to work these out on this assignment you have to show me all all of this because practicing it is what's going to put it into your head where then it'll just start to become automatic for you so that'll be it the next few weeks after this video i'm just sitting there, you won't have your, your Chromebooks anymore, but you will have paper assignments. So you're going to have some assignments, and I'm just going to give you problems to solve. And you got to fill them out on that paper and then hand them back into me. You can take a photograph of those and email me the, uh, your, your work that you did, but you have to show again, you have to show all your work. I don't want just answers. That doesn't help whatsoever. I'm not looking for answers. I'm looking for you to do the work. So, so that I know it's becoming ingrained in your brain. All right? Okay, thanks guys.